before I actually got married, my full name was Grace Antonella Zavala Moran. So I actually kept Zavala because in Ecuador, we're, we're very proud of family, especially, you know, our last name. Mm-hmm. So when I transitioned to be married to Corey, mm-hmm. I was like, I'm keeping my dad's last name. Like, it's like a <laughs> thing. Yeah. So I was like, okay, I'm going to be Antonella mm-hmm. Zavala Marks. And Corey's like, and you pronounce your middle name? And I'm like, yeah, I'm proud. Like, that's just how yeah. proud we are and how family oriented we are back home. Yeah. So, I yeah. I love it. And we've got our margaritas. Oh. Having a little bit of a cocktail is this not a siesta this wouldn't be a siesta no that would definitely not be a siesta (laughs) (laughs) those are like at 3 p.m you know siestas 3 p.m till 3 p.m 6 you know what what do you do at a siesta so we just rest after we work which back home is usually till around two and then you sleep till five and then you have dinner with your family afterwards yeah it's nice to have i'm in the wrong country definitely (laughs) we don't have no siestas here (laughs) Well, I'll tell a little bit about the, the yes. history. So you and I, we worked together mm-hmm. in uh, staffing and recruiting, uh, temporary staffing, industrial staffing mm-hmm. um, uh, in the Kansas City metro uh, area. And so I had uh, interviewed you for an opportunity and uh, yes. you came on board as one of our team members and and uh, you have done so well in that, in the talent acquisition space and field. And you, you've become really quite an influence in just the Kansas City area, especially uh, with the Latina, the ha- Hispanic, uh, Latinx community, uh, Ecuadorian community. And I, I first want to start out because I think you have such a fascinating story uh, about what brought you here because mm-hmm. you started going to school here. And yes. tell us a little bit about that journey because I think it's, it's fascinating how you just navigated this independence from Ecuador, from South America, all the uh, uh, way up into uh, Central and Northern America. So tell us all about it. Okay, perfect. <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> so when I was 13, I think we have, and just so you know, we have big quinceañeras. So when I was 13, I was getting ready to have my big quinceañera. That's the big and- celebration coming to be a woman okay yes and I was like I don't want a big party like dad send me like out of the country I just want to travel and see what's out there you know besides home and my dad's like okay well let's send you to an English course and I went up to uh, Bournemouth in England Oh. At 13 years old, by myself for 13 three years months. old by yourself. Yes. And, you know, when you're like young, you're so fearless. So I remember, like now I will be petrified to get by myself on a plane like that. Hey, Most like, 13 year olds would have been petrified. Yes, yes. But I was like, my dad was crying at the airport in Miami and he put me on the plane and I was just like calling with the pay phones when I got to Heathrow Airport. And I'm like, mom, I made it. I'm waiting for the taxi. And I'm like 13. And my mom's like crying and telling my dad, why did you let her go? <laughs> and it just showed me a different world. Uh, and I just started wanting to be out to learn different cultures. I actually met um, one of my old friends from Brazil. And uh, he was crazy. Like, my mom my mom is very religious. And that's part of being, you know, from uh, South America. And she's like, man, God gave you an angel. Because this friend brought her dad. So uh, throughout those three months, I would take the bus with her and her dad. And then I came back to Ecuador after three months. And I was like, you know, I want to go to college to America. Like, I want to go to a different country. I want to experience, you know, it's the American dream. Mm-hmm. It's great. And let me pause. So you you went over there to learn English. Yes. Did you learn English in three months? Or did you already know a little bit? No, I, they call me the yes girl in the house because I would say yes to everything. <laughs> so, so they wanted, because I didn't know. My English was like yeah. two to um like two over a, a 10, like two. To oh, ten, maybe two, two out of ten. Two out of ten. That's that's pretty that bad. Wasn't good. No, that was definitely <laughs> not good. And I remember my host mom always coming to ask me if I wanted to eat, and I would have already eaten out of the house, and I would say always yes, and then she would bring me food, and I'm like, no, <laughs> no, and right then now. she's like, but you say yes, and I'm like, yes, yeah, <laughs> yeah, because yeah, yeah. I didn't want to be rude, so I just kept saying yes to everything. So yeah, so he helped me a little bit, I mm-hmm. think, kind of getting out of my shell. So you're really full in England because you ate <laughs> a lot yes my host mom was great and she would always be like do you want to eat do you want to yeah. eat and I kept saying yes all the time yeah. to everything yes yes, yeah. yes 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 so that and then you go back yes so I went back and I think I traveled a couple more times 
And then it came the time that I was about 17, 18, getting out of high school. And my actually my last trip was to Santa Barbara, California when I was 15. And I actually oh. stayed there for... Fifth, uh, for six months, six months at least. Okay. Yeah, six months. And uh, my host mom was actually from Mexico and she was living in California, but she was very nice and she's like, We can't speak Spanish, you gotta learn English. So she would always speak to me in English and it was great. <laughs> 